Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we're going to learn all about the Epiphone Les Paul Classic Warren series guitars. That's part of the new Inspired by Gibson lineup. Essentially, what Epiphone has done for their new 2020 series is mimic their Gibson lineup. They have an Epiphone Modern and an Epiphone Original collection, just like they have a Gibson Original and Modern collection. And pretty much the biggest feature that all of these guitars share is the brand new headstock design. This is more akin to the old Epiphone Kalamazoo styled headstock. It's a very welcomed addition in my eyes. So the Les Paul Classic, despite being called classic in its title, it's actually part of the Les Paul Modern series. And that's made up of six guitars in the Epiphone lineup. There's the Les Paul Modern, as well as the Modern Figure Tops, the Les Paul Studio, as well as the Muse series, and then there's these guys, the Classic and the Classic Worn. The price points vary between $449 to $699, so these are definitely mid-tier level instruments. But today we're going to learn about the Classics. So as the name implies, these are based off of the Gibson Les Paul Classic that's part of the Modern Collection that retails at $1,999. So we've got the regular Classics as well as the Classic Worn. What is the difference between the two? Well, first off, the original classics are $499, whereas the Warren series is $449. So there's a $50 savings by buying this one. The classics feature fancy electronics of coil split as well as in and out of phase through the use of push-pull pots. Whereas the Faded series, yes, we do get coil splitting technology on here, but you do not get the phase inversion in the middle position. Another huge difference that's quite confusing to me is the gloss finished ones get CTS pots, whereas the Warren series gets left out. But the biggest difference between them is a gloss finish on the classics and the Warren, well, as the name implies, it's Epiphone's new Warren finish. Now what Warren means is you can actually feel this wood grain with your hands, you can see it and it's especially prevalent on the back. Now as a player's instrument I actually prefer these worn finishes because I think they feel better, they're a little bit more slick, they're not quite as sticky, and let's face it those full gloss Epiphone finishes they can get pretty thick so as a player I prefer the worn finishes but that's just my own personal preference your results may vary. And these actually have slightly different color options. Both of them have a heritage cherry version as well as an ebony finish, but the gloss versions have a honey burst finish, whereas the worn finishes have an exclusive metallic gold as well as this purple finish. But the main features that you need to know about these new Les Paul classics from the Epiphone lineup is they have the new headstock. They also have nice upgraded Grover tuners that are 18 to one ratio and they've been upgraded with a graph tech nut. So these are just meant to be great mid-tier level instruments. But let's go ahead and grab my first impressions of it. If you missed the unboxing video, I wasn't 100% pleased with this thing when I first opened it. I absolutely loved the finish. I had to take a minute just to take it all in, but I'm not a huge fan of this open pour finish on the top when it's a burst color because I want to see this beautiful purple burst. I don't want to have all these craters in it. And the big thing for me is you only see it like around the edge where the burst is, whereas some parts of the body are smooth. So it's not my favorite now that I've seen it in person, but I had the exact opposite reaction to the back. At NAMM, I was immensely disappointed that these things got a black back. I would have loved to see a burst or some other type of complementary color to the purple. But this open grain finish on the back with this black finish, it looks really cool. It reminds me of one of those cool Les Paul Studios that has like the dog hair finish to it. It's really cool. I'm digging that and I love the way it feels. So it's kind of a, a love-hate relationship when it comes to that. Hate it on the front, but dig it on the back. But the aesthetics of this thing is just beautiful. I'm so happy they brought a purple burst finish back to a Les Paul. The last time they did this was in the mid 2000s on a series called the Les Paul Goddess. They weren't immensely popular when they were brand new, but as time went on, people found out about them. Yeah, those are not pretty expensive guitars because people want the purple burst Les Pauls. I'm hopeful that this means Gibson is going to do a limited edition purple burst in the future. I wouldn't really want it on a Les Paul Classic, but I guess it makes sense that it's on here since it's part of the modern collection. I would love to see the purple 50 standard or a 60 standard. <laughs> That'd be fun. But the cream colored plastics with the zebra pickups, the gold bell style knobs, I'm really digging all of this. I think it works really well. But I'm noticing that this guitar, it's pretty chunky considering that the Gibson equivalent of this has nine hole weight relief. 
And yeah, this one has a few fret issues. It's not quite as extreme as that SG that we did the review on. I might be able to dial this one in a little bit more. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench, take an individual look at its parts and specs and see how it was made, as well as check out the quality control. Let's uncover the mysteries of the Classic Warren. Starting with the pickups, these are called the Alnico Classic Pros. Alnico is short for aluminum, nickel, and cobalt. And it's just branded Epiphone. It tells you not to throw them away. It has a compliance sticker. Then I'm guessing that stands for Alnico Classic Pro and then whatever this other stuff means. But designed by Epiphone USA, okay. Looks like these pickups were made in October 10 of 2019. And the bridge pickup was made in November and Alnico Classic Pro, and that has a dot. Maybe that means it's for the bridge pickup. As far as pickup readings go in the bridge, it's 7.89. The neck reads a little bit less, 7.67, and the middle will be about half that, 3.89. Now let's take a look at the cavities. There's a rumor saying that the 50s and 60s standards have long neck tenons. I'll have to see that to believe it. But these guys get a short neck tenon, so you cannot see it within there. And it looks like there might be a little seven in there, potentially. As far as the routes go, they look pretty good. I don't see any super splintered edges, but there is kind of a spot where it kind of chipped out right there, so it's a little bit deeper. Not a big deal by any means. And in the bridge pickup cavity, I see a four and our QR code that tells us it's a Les Paul Classic VP. And that is actually your serial number, so that should technically match what's on the backside of your headstock. I believe the way to read those is it's 19 for the year and then 11 for the month. So it's a pretty late 2019 made for the 2020 lineup. And they call their bridge the Loctone. It's kind of ABR1 in style with a wire over top of it and it's branded Epiphone. And they call it Loctone because it actually locks to the posts. But it doesn't use an Allen wrench like some of the Tone Pros ones. It just kind of naturally locks to it because it has some tongs on it. Honestly, this one's a little bit hard to remove. And the bridge has the same thing going on. You can see those tongs right there. And the back is also Epiphone branded. Moving on here, it's a three-way toggle switch. It's definitely the Epiphone import style. You can hear it's a little bit louder than the Gibson variant, but it seems to work and function very nicely. And following along the body, it's supposed to have a maple top, but how thick is it? There we go. That's actually a full maple top right there. You can see where the mahogany begins down here, and then that's all maple. So it's a plain maple top, but the specs were almost making me question, is it actually a veneer? No, it's a full top. Then that is joined onto a solid mahogany body, which is kind of strange that they didn't weight relieve it like they did the Gibson ones. But I really want to take a minute to look at these knobs. I'm actually really enjoying these knobs because they're a little bit different from the Gibson counterpart. But we do have the fancy electronics, so you've got push pulls here. You got to pull up on them and push them down. I was not even expecting that when I ordered this guitar. That was kind of just an added bonus for me. But just like the last episode, they have these orientated in a way that bugs me because full on 10 is about two notches past where Gibson sets them. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap those. And while I do that, we'll take a closer look at these. So here's a nice side-by-side -side comparison to the Epiphone version as well as the Gibson version. You can tell this one's a little bit darker, has more of a metallic sheen to it, and these are kind of a lighter colored one, but I'm not really even worried about that. It's the side profile view. Do you see this little ridge at the top of this one? The Gibson variant does not have that. It's completely smooth, but I'm finding I like this little ridge despite not being smooth because it kind of gives you a little bit more grip. You can see besides just the ridge up here, there's also one kind of where the skirt begins. So it might actually be a cheaper way to make those, but I'm actually really digging that little feature that you wouldn't see in normal spec sheets. We might as well measure the shafts here. So that's a little bit better. And the last thing we have to look at is the pick guard. Is it the best made pick guard ever? No, you can see there's a little bit of splintering of the plastic there, but I'll just take a razor blade and clean that up a little bit. So no big issues there. And I think that little impression is actually just part of the wood grain, not like a misslip of them trying to install the pick guard, but I could be wrong. And if you look really closely, the pick guard is a slightly darker shade of cream than the pickup ring. It's not really super noticeable, but I thought I would mention it. But moving on from the body here, we have a mahogany neck with an Indian laurel fretboard. Now this guitar, 
as soon as I took some steel wool to it, the fretboard actually started to darken up. And then once I did the conditioning process, wow, this thing came to life. Now, Indian Laurel, some people don't like it. Honestly, this is the second guitar that I've had recently that has had this fretboard. I don't really hate it. I don't really love it. It's just a very open grain porous wood that looks very similar to rosewood. So I'm okay with it as of right now because after I get done with it, it does look pretty amazing. Straight out of the box, this was like a light gray colored fretboard, but now it's looking great. But as far as our fretboard radius, it is 12 inches. You have 22 medium jumbo frets, so they're very good for doing bends on. But what I really love about this is the inlay work. So normally these perloid inlays, they don't look that impressive, but these ones catch the light in such a way that, you know, they actually look like real mother of pearl at certain angles. And that's not always the case. These ones are just kind of like extra special. In my but as far as neck specs go, nut width 1.69 inches. And at the 12th, that increases to 2.07. First fret neck depth, 0.83. And by the 12th, it's 0.96 which seems a little bit chunky, but I think that's just because the heel is starting. These are advertised as a slim 60s neck profile, and it's pretty close to the 24 and 3 quarters inch scale. But the nut is a Graftec new bone. I went ahead and put some graphite in there anyways. But I wanted to take a look at these tuners because this is one of the selling features of these. They're saying that they're using real Grover tuners with an 18 to 1 ratio. So here's an up-close look at this tuner. Everything's looking good there, but I am not an expert on Grovers. I'm not sure if these are a lower-end version or the same thing that you would find on a Gibson Les Paul from the USA factory. It looks like it says 8C and then there's an HC emblem. But they do feel like pretty nice quality tuners. Now, as far as the frat work goes, that seems to be the Achilles heel of these new Epiphones, where you're going to have to be expected to do a level recrown job because most of these have had high frets. So I went through with my little fret rocker here to kind of determine what areas were bad with this one. And it's the fourth fret, and it's mainly on the G string area where it has a little bit of a high fret, but the rest are pretty level. That seems to be there on pretty much every single one I've done so far. But other ones I found were like the eighth fret, that pretty much all those were bad. The 11th fret was a little bit high. You've got the 15th and then all the way up here at the 21st. So what I did, I'm tired of just complaining about this. I wanna learn how to do it. So I reached out to Stu Max. So it sounds like we might have a partnership so I can just start fixing these Epiphones instead of just telling you about them. Because it's a lot easier just to fix it than to return to hope the next one's better <laughs> that'll definitely be an added asset to my new guitar day program and then the headstock itself it is a satin finish it has the les paul model silk screen and the epiphone logo it does have a little bit of pearlescence to it but it just looks like a white decal most of the time because of the satin finish and our truss rod is right there and they provide you the little allen key that you would need for it so besides the frets, how's the rest of the quality control? I think they actually did a really good job on this guitar. The only nitpicky things I could find is the purple finish ran up along the binding. That's pretty common even on a Gibson. The finish is a little bit uneven right there on the binding. But everything else on this guitar was actually pretty good. I didn't find too much except for some of the screws were seated slightly crooked. And that's most evident on this screw on the back plate. But for an Epiphone at this price range, I think that's pretty good. I just wish the frets were better because then this would have a more positive feel to this review. But the back is mahogany. You can't see how many pieces it is back here. They probably have some sort of veneer or something. But there's at least one seam line visible right here in the cutaway. Notice this has the thin binding in the cutaway. So I'd guess this is at least, at least a three-piece body. Oh, I wish I would have caught this on camera. You guys won't believe me. Look what they did. That's why that was installed weird. It looks like it's been installed before. Yeah, so it looks like it kind of stripped out right there. So they just kind of tilted it at a different angle. So that's a factory oopsie if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Jeez, they really messed that up. That's kind of funny, but completely harmless. But let's go ahead and take this cover off. While filming this, I was under the impression that both of the classics had CTS pots, but these ones are actually the made in Korea pots. And I think that's a little bit dirty that it's only a $50 discount that you get a cheaper finish and cheaper pots and less fancy electronics. I honestly think the classic faded should be at least $75 cheaper than the full blown classics. Because as a regular Joe, I would expect that the classic and classic worn would be the same, just minus the finish. But this classic worn uses a quick connect system for its pickups on the push pull pots. But as far as the route job, yeah, that all feels pretty good, except for right here again, it's very rough feeling. 
Along the edge here, we're utilizing a metal output jack plate, so that's good to know. And you've got the kind of large style buttons here with the felt washers to make sure the fit is nice and secure. But moving on to the mahogany neck here, it's kind of hard to tell, but this one also has that kind of heel cap thing. They grafted on a new piece of wood to complete the heel. They did a pretty good job of hiding it, but you can just see the slight grain difference right there. But this is a slim 60s neck profile. I'm liking it. I love the way that this thing feels. You have your Made in China sticker right there. Then you've got your quality control sticker there and your Grover tuners. But lastly, this guitar weighs just under nine pounds at eight pounds, 14.5 ounces. That's not too bad. It's definitely body heavy though, so it feels a little bit heavier than that. But let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds. Starting with our neck pickup. So coil split that. So definitely has a nice meaty sound to it. Moving on to the bridge position. really surprised at how bright this guitar is. That's kind of nice, really. Now our middle position. It's actually a pretty nice versatile guitar. Let's go ahead and do some more playing samples and comparisons between all the settings. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now that we know all about the Les Paul Classic Warren, what are my final thoughts on this thing? I've got to say, Epiphone impressed me with this one. Not so much on the fretwork, but that aside, this really is an excellent guitar, and I dig the finish. I dig it so much I had to change my shirt. <laughs> so as far as the tone goes, I thought it got really good cleans. I was impressed with the P90 cleans as well on the SG Classic, but I think where this one did a little bit better was in the distorted tones. They're not fantastic, but I think they're definitely within that acceptable territory. The coil splits, once you actually activate them, it gets a little bit noisy for my tastes. I didn't necessarily notice it in the room, but back in the recording, it's like, oh yeah, that's pretty noisy electronics. But this thing definitely had some tone. It was chimey and bright, but yet it could still get dark in certain areas too. So at this price point of 450 bucks, I'm definitely definitely impressed. As far as quality controls go, yeah, the frets, they need some work. It's about a $50 to $100 job. There were a few small finish things. That's not a big deal. The back plate, I don't know if that should have made it out of the factory or not. It's, it's kind of hard because do you ever see it? No, but do you really want to scrap this whole body just because you messed up a few screw holes? It probably should have been sold as a factory second. So if you are interested in one of these beauties, I would highly suggest going to an authorized dealer and checking one out in store because the fretwork seems to be, you know, kind of hit or miss with a lot of misses. <laughs> but I've only unboxed five of these guys. I'm going to demo a bunch of the new Epiphone series, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss all those future uploads. But to end this one out, let's go ahead and check it out under blacklight. Under blacklight, just for fun here, it almost kind of turns into like a sunburst finish. That's kind of strange because the purple with the blue light, it just kind of makes it this strange orangish color. That's interesting. But everything's looking good here. I mean, we're not really going to find any breaks, cracks, or repairs, but look at the inlays. They glow in a pretty cool green color. Face of the headstock also has a very light glow. And the reason why that does that is because it's actually a slightly different finish compared to everything else, I believe. Back of the guitar, everything's looking good here with nothing to really complain about. If you decide to purchase one of these online, they do come in a double walled box. You could kind of use it as a case for storage or if you need to take it from place to place, but yeah, you're probably gonna want a regular case anyways. But you do get some case candy here. You get an Epiphone poster. Honestly, Epiphone, I think you guys need to uh, update this because it has all the old models on here yet, but I get it. It'll take time for them to get new marketing materials. Well, that's a kind of cool poster anyways. And you also get the Epiphone sticker, owner's manual, something telling you that it's been carefully inspected and only leaves the plant in perfect condition. I wonder if I could call Epiphone and get the frets leveled. But I hope you troglodytes enjoyed this in-depth look at the new Epiphone Les Paul Classic Worn. This was my open and honest opinion of it. Thank you troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.